If you are planning to land a job in the domain of data analytics, this video is for you. Today we are going to talk about top 10 conceptual questions asked in data analytics interviews. Do not forget to check out our uh, previous videos that we have done in the series. I'll leave a link to them in the description part below. Now let's jump into today's video. This question is about what are the various steps involved in a data analytics project. Guys, this is one of the most basic data analyst uh, interview question. The various steps involved in any common analytics projects are as follows. You start with understanding the business problem. Here you define the organizational goals and the plan for a lucrative solution. After that, you start collecting data. Now you must gather the right data from various sources and other information based on your priorities. The third step is cleaning data. Over here, you clean the data by removing unwanted, redundant and uh, missing values and make it ready for analysis. After the cleaning process is done, you start exploring and analyzing your data. You can do this by using data visualizations and uh, business intelligence tools, data mining techniques and predictive modeling to analyze your data. Finally, the last step is interpreting the results. You interpret the result to find out hidden patterns, future trends and gain insights. So these are all the steps. Now let's move on to the next question. Our next question is about the key differences between data analysis and data mining. Talking about data analysis, it involves the process of cleaning, organizing and using data to draw meaningful insights. In other words, it's like cleaning up a messy room. You tidy up, organize stuff and make sense of it all. The end goal of data analysis is to get valuable insights from the data. Also, data analysis produces results that are far more comprehensible by a variety of audience. Whereas data mining is used to search for hidden patterns in the data. In simple words, data mining is like being a detective in a treasure hunt. Now let me explain this in terms of projects. A good example of a data analytics project could be predicting the price of diamonds. Here you can perform exploratory data analysis of a data set using Python libraries such as Pandas, Matplotlib and Seaborn to explore the data set of diamonds. Understanding how different features of the diamond like carrot, cut, color, etc. determine the price of the diamond is what your problem statement would be. Specific to data mining, let's say you pick up a Kaggle users data set to analyze the preferences of Indians in investing their money. Idea would be to uh, identify hidden patterns like uh, which gender is likely to pick specific investment options like mutual funds, fixed deposits, government bonds, etc. As the dataset also contains the age of individual, you can use it to know the bias of uh, younger and older people for investing their money. By the way guys, if you want to read more on these projects or you want to go ahead and do these projects, I'll put a link to both in the description part of the video. Now let's move on to the next question. Alright, this question is, what is data validation? Explain different types of data validation techniques. For this, first let's understand what data validation is. It is a process of ensuring that data is accurate, consistent and meets the required quality standards. In simple words, it's like a set of checks and uh, tests that uh, data goes through to verify its reliability and integrity. Now, there are many types of data validation techniques that are used today. One of them being field level validation. Field level validation is done across each of the fields to ensure that there are no errors in the data entered by the user. Think of this like a spell checker for individual words. Another type uh, is form level validation. Form level validation is done when the user completes working with the form, but before the information is saved. In the context of form level data validation, a form typically refers to a structured input interface or a document that collects and organizes data from users. And form level validation is like reviewing the whole form to make sure it's complete and makes sense before submitting it, like proofreading a job application. Next is data saving validation. This form of validation takes place uh, when the file or the database record is being saved. This is like checking for errors right before you save a document or record, uh, ensuring everything is in the right format. Finally, search criteria validation. Search criteria validation is used to check whether uh, valid results are returned when the user is looking for something. Think of uh, this like using a search engine 
where you are uh, making sure your search terms are clear and will give you the right result when you look for something online. So this is a basic idea about different types of data validation techniques. Let's move on to the next question. This question is what are outliers and how do you detect and treat outliers? Let's understand what an outlier is first. Outlier is an observation in a given data set that lies far from the rest of the observations. That means an outlier is vastly larger or smaller than the remaining values in the set. In simple words, outliers are uh, extreme values that might not match with the rest of the data points. Now, how do you detect outliers? Well, to detect outliers, there are quite a few ways. First one is a box plot. So we know uh, that while using a box plot, we can easily find outliers. The second technique is z-score and uh, then there's interquartile range. So these are the techniques uh, to detect outliers. Now to treat outliers, the first thing you can do is drop them, where you can just delete all the records that contain outliers. The second method is capping outliers data. The third method is assigning a new value. You can uh, assign the mean, median, or some other appropriate value to it. Over here, the fourth thing you can do is just try a new transformation like normalization. So that is all about outliers. Let's move on to the next question. Our next question is, what are different types of sampling techniques? To understand this, let's first understand what sampling is. Sampling is a statistical method to select a subset of data from an entire data set to estimate the characteristics of the whole population. What this essentially means is that in sampling, you take a part of the entire data set and try to analyze only that part. And based on the results of that particular sample, you will derive conclusion for the entire data set. Now, for the different types of sampling techniques, we have simple random sampling, systematic sampling, cluster sampling, stratified sampling, and judgmental sampling. You can read about uh, these various sampling techniques from this slide. Also, you may take a screenshot if you would want to keep it for your later reference. Now, let's move on to the next question. So this question is about hypothesis testing. Hypothesis testing is a form of statistical inference that uses data from a sample to draw conclusions about a population parameter or a population probability distribution. To perform hypothesis testing, first a tentative assumption is made about the parameter. This assumption is called the null hypothesis and is denoted by H0. And then there is an alternate hypothesis called HA. So let me explain this in simple words. Let's say you have an assumption, the average height in the city of Delhi is five feet. This becomes your uh, assumption or the null hypothesis. Your alternate hypothesis, let's say is no, the average height in the city of Delhi is more or less than five feet. Now you can't measure every person in the city because that's uh, way too many people. So you measure a small group, let's say 1000 people, uh, this small group is uh, your sample that is representative of the larger population of Delhi. Now you use the data from this smaller group for testing your hypothesis and come to a conclusion whether the average height of Delhi is 5 feet or more. And in a nutshell, this entire process is what is called as hypothesis testing. Now let's move on to the next question. This question asks what a normal distribution is. Well, a normal distribution, also known as a Gaussian distribution or bell curve, is a fundamental concept in statistics and data analysis. It represents a specific type of probability distribution that is characterized by a symmetric bell-shaped curve. Let me double click on these characteristics. First is symmetry. Normal distribution curve is perfectly symmetrical with the mean, median and mode all being at the center. Talking about shape, the normal distribution forms a bell-shaped curve with the majority of data points concentrated near the mean and progressively fewer data points as you move away from the mean. Normal distribution is defined by two parameters, the mean, which represents the central value, and the standard deviation, which measures the spread of dispersion of the data. Talking about the spread of data, approximately 68% of the data falls within one standard deviation from the mean, 95% within two standard deviations, and 99.7% of the data lies between three standard deviations. 
Normal distributions are vital in data analysis because many natural phenomena and human-made processes tend to follow this pattern. Understanding and identifying normal distributions are crucial for various statistical tests, hypothesis testing, and making predictions in fields like finance, quality control, and scientific research. Now let's move on to the next question. This question asks the difference between univariate, bivariate, and multivariate data. First, let's understand what these mean. Univariate data is like uh, looking at one thing at a time. It's when you are only interested in one variable or one aspect of something. For example, if you are only thinking about people's height and nothing else, that's univariate data. Bivariate is like uh, looking at two things together. In bivariate data, you are interested in how two different things are related to each other. For example, if you are trying to figure out if there's a connection between temperature and ice cream sales, that's bivariate data. Finally, multivariate is like looking at uh, many things all at once. In multivariate data, you are not just focused on two things, you are studying three or more things together. For example, if you want to understand how the popularity of uh, four different advertisements on a website depend on various factors like age, gender, and location, that's multivariate data. And these are the differences that we have documented for you between univariate, bivariate, and multivariate data. You may take a screenshot of this particular table for your uh, later reference. Now let's move on to the next question. This question asks about the differences between uh, underfitting and overfitting. As usual, we'll first understand uh, what underfitting and overfitting is. A statistical model or a machine learning algorithm is said to have underfitting when a model is too simple to capture data complexities. In simple words, underfitting is like having a tool that's too basic for the job. This tool is too simple and doesn't understand the tricky parts of the job. It won't work well. And a statistical model is said to be overfitted when the model does not make accurate predictions on the test data. When a model gets trained with too much data, it starts learning from the noise and inaccurate data entries in our data set. Uh, in simple terms, overfitting is like uh, studying so much detail that you get confused and uh, make mistakes. And this table shows the differences between the two, overfitting and underfitting. Screenshot this for your uh, future reference. Now let's move on to the next question. This question asks, what are the common problems that data analysts encounter during analysis? Well, the problem can be faced in four different steps. First, with the collection of data. This is because data can be scattered across different sources, making it difficult to collect and consolidate this data. Moreover, data may be incomplete or inaccurate, requiring cleaning and pre-processing. It may be sensitive data, requiring uh, careful handling and storage. Next challenge comes at storing this data. Data can be huge, requiring scalable uh, storage solutions. Plus, it needs to be backed up and protected from loss or corruption. Not just that, data needs to be accessible to authorized users while protecting it from unauthorized access. There are specific uh, challenges to process data as well. Data can be complex and difficult to analyze, requiring specialized tools and skills. Along with that, data processing can be time consuming and computationally expensive. Mm -hmm. And the results of data processing need to be interpreted and communicated effectively. Finally, data quality and governance. Data quality is essential for accurate and reliable analysis and data governance ensures that data is managed and used responsibly. So guys, that's all we had for you today. If you have any more questions, let us know in the comments and we'll get back to you. Subscribe to our channel for more such interesting data tech content. Good luck to you. Bye.